Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. CNN devotes entire segment comparing inside of a dog's ear to Trump's face, and it gets worse. CNN is totally real news? Right guys? CNN devoted an entire segment to discussing how they found that the inside of a dog's ear looks like President Trump's face. A dog named Chief has an ear that looks like Trump's face, reported CNN. CNN reports that the dog had an ear infection, and when taking pictures to send to the vet, they discovered Donald Trump. CNN then reads several tweets of people reacting to the news. The dog owners made a fundraiser to raise 600 euros for their dog. As for Chief, his ears are improving with treatment. Until then, he's got the ear of the president hail to this chief," said CNN's Gene Moose. This joins the list of CNN's aggressive angry and irrelevant stories about President Trump. Earlier this year, CNN reported that President Trump took two scoops of ice cream, while everyone else took one. They tried to make this into a metaphor for Trump being selfish. They also just reported on Trump dumping fish food into a koi pond in Japan. They tried to make it seem like Trump did something wrong and overfed the fish. But in reality President Trump was just following the Japanese leader's lead. CNN prides itself on reporting hard news and being fair and balanced. Hannity gives Roy Moore 24 hours in brutal takedown. While Hannity believes that we should never accuse people without evidence, he was able to objectively point out the holes in Roy Moore's story. While liberals like to pretend that Fox will defend any Republican no matter what, Hannity did not go easy on Moore. I do not and will never rush to judgment. Because we have seen the media and politicians get it wrong so many times, I've outlined all of that. Now. In light of new information about Judge Roy Moore, we have to address this issue again tonight," started Hannity. Hannity went on to show clips of Moore responding to accusations. Some of his answers were inconsistent. He denied knowing this fifth accuser, but this accuser has brought forth a yearbook that Moore appeared to sign, to a sweeter, more beautiful girl, I could not say Merry Christmas, love, Roy Moore, D.A. I looked at the handwriting. I know some people on Twitter have said things about this," said Hannity. Here's where I am tonight, between this interview that I did and the inconsistent answers, between him saying I never knew this girl and then that yearbook comes out. For me, the judge has 24 hours. You must immediately and fully come up with a satisfactory explanation for your inconsistencies that I just showed. You must remove any doubt. If you can't do this. Then Judge Moore needs to get out of this race. This country has way too many issues and problems. The American people deserve 100% truth and honesty," said Hannity. Do you think he's right? Tucker Carlson exposes how Roy Moore is just like Al Sharpton. There have been a lot of allegations against Roy Moore. However, although there is not enough evidence to prove anything, Tucker Carlson critiqued Moore for handling the situation just like Ray Spader Al Sharpton would. Roy Moore should respond to specific allegations with specific explanations. It's not enough to say people don't like him for what he believes. In a recent tweet, Moore declared that the forces of evil will lie, cheat steal dash even inflict physical harm dash if they believe it will silence and shut up Christian conservatives," explained Carlson. Now there is some truth in that. Of course, there are people who hate Roy Moore because of his beliefs, his Christian beliefs, the entire American left, for example. But that's not exactly the point here. The point is that Moore has been accused of appalling behavior on the record by a number of women, not all of them liberals at least one of them a Trump voter," explained Carlson. Moore's response? He's claiming to be the victim of bigotry. Now that's what demagogues do when they are cornered. 
That's what Al Sharpton does, said Carlson. Not everyone accused of something is guilty of it, obviously, and we ought to keep that in mind, not just in Moore's case, but in all of these cases. Roy Moore has every right to protest his innocence, and maybe he is innocent. What he's not allowed to do is drag God into all of this, he said. Do you think he's right? Naughty gay grandpa George Takei explains why it was okay to say he grabbed men by the crotch. Former Star Trek actor, LGBT activist, and vocal Trump critic George Takei has been accused of drugging and attempting to rape a man. Takei denied these accusations, and even tried blaming the Russians for propaganda against him. But then a Howard Stern interview was released that was recorded days before the accusations where he joked that he grabs shy men by the genitals. What's his excuse for the interview? According to him, he was playing the role of the naughty gay grandpa, and like Kevin Spacey, Takei tried to blame him being gay for being a sexual predator. Many have raised concern over a back and forth between Howard Stern and myself, where we joked about me touching men during my Star Trek days 50 years ago. Out of context, I agree that the joke was distasteful, and I'm very sorry he and I made fun out of a serious matter, wrote Takei. For decades, I have played the part of a naughty gay grandpa when I visit Howard's show, a caricature I now regret. But I want to be clear, I have never forced myself upon someone during a date. Sometimes my dates were the initiators, and sometimes I was. It was always by mutual consent, he wrote. I see now that that it has come across poorly in the awkward sketch, and I apologize for playing along with Howard's insinuation. Non-consensual acts are anathema to me and my personal code of conduct, and I would never do something against anyone's will, period, wrote Decay. CNN says they are reporting that Bannon is sticking by Roy Moore despite him saying otherwise. CNN's Wolf Blitzer and White House correspondent Jeff Zellini are reporting that Steve Bannon is sticking with Roy Moore, who has been accused of sexual assault by several women. However, what they are reporting is very different than what Steve Bannon actually said. But of course, truth has never mattered to CNN. We know Steve Bannon, the former chief strategist here at the White House the head of Breitbart News, who supported Roy Moore, is still with him at this point. Our colleagues Jeremy Diamond and Dana Bash and others are reporting Steve Bannon is still supportive of Judge Moore. But Wolf, this is a fluid situation. We've not heard from the president on this topic, said Zellini. Donald Trump's former chief strategist Steve Bannon is keeping the door open to ditching Roy Moore as the sexual assault allegations against the Alabama Republican Senate candidate continue to pile up, wrote the Daily Beast. Originally Steve Bannon said that these allegations are just another desperate attempt by Mitch McConnell to keep power, and it's not going to work. You know, people in Alabama see through this. The good folks of Alabama are going to be able to weigh and measure this. This is an orchestrated hit from the unit party. However, according to the Daily Beast, Bannon has been privately talking to people in the inner circle. He recently claimed that I will put him in a grave myself if he determines that Moore is lying. Jon Stewart responds to people who want less bias in comedy tough SHT, those people hate minorities. Former Daily Show host Jon Stewart attacked those who feel like comedy has been too politically biased. For many conservatives, Comedy on television has lost its touch, because it has all turned into liberal propaganda. But according to Stewart, if you think that way, then you are racist. For people who don't share your politics and feel alienated by what they see in TV comedy, who wish we could go back to a more even handed era of Johnny Carson, do they have a point? Asked an interviewer for the New York Times. Here's what I would say, tough SHT. Honestly. The idea that you've lost the pleasure of watching Carson? We all have lost that pleasure. I used to like watching Carson, 
too. But I think that's a cop-out, explained Stewart. The people that say, this culture isn't for me, live in a nostalgic world. Those are the people that are the first to tell minorities, suck it up. Those are the first people to say to individuals that are being relentlessly either ostracized or legally threatened, oh, snowflake, watch yourself. But God forbid somebody doesn't say Merry Christmas, said Stewart making unfair stereotypes about everyone who disagrees with him. It's the empty rhetoric of grievance, and I don't feel bad in any way, whatsoever, said Stewart, 